Hello Heroes, Far and Wide, a 3D hero here, and I'm back once again with a fantastic titan build that we all love and share. A curious of the Falling Star is an S tier exotic for the titan, which allows titans to be the celestial hawk of the titan world against enemies. Its sheer damage can one shot the majority of faces, while severely weakening bosses it connects with, but as of now it's been generally quiet in terms of its use, and I want to change that, just a bit. We will be using the base templates for the Thunder Crash build that we are familiar with, and will be enhancing further with another damage layer, the super powerful grenades for getting more super energy, and non-stop jolt effects. GMs are here, so why not use a build to make your lives even more easier than before, such as this. But before we jump in, if you enjoy the content then please leave a like, a sub, a share, and turn on your notifications for more content like this in the future, as it would really help me out. So to start, you need Thunder Crash as that's pretty much what makes the entirety of the build able to do its thing, plus common sense. The rest of the subclass fragments and aspects being used will be copied from our last arc build based around the harder image light effect. Since the following setup was simple to understand, but also offered users a ton of effectiveness via your grenades alone, I found that just the following setup again it fits the build perfectly in achieving our goals and getting our super up within a few minutes or less. So here is what I'm running for the build. The Touch of Thunder aspect allows you to enhance one of the four grenades you have available. The one we are using allows our storm grenades to track for longer. We then have Knockout, where critically wounding a target will increase your melee damage and start regenerating your health. For Fragments, we have Spark of Ions, where defeating a joy of target creates armor traces. Spark of Beacons, where while amplified, your arc special weapon's final blows create a blinding explosion. Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets and Spark of Magnitude, where your grenade duration is extended. For stats, we have 18 Resilience, 18 Discipline, and 15 Intellect. For key mods, you need to have Bountiful Wealth for plus 2 wells created, Fondle Wisdom for getting a plus 50 Intellect stat, Elemental Ordnance for creating wells via grenades, a Seeking Wells for Elemental Wells created to track to you, and Thunderous Retort, where your super damage is increased by an extra 30%. The subclass section is as easy as it can get with understanding the main basis of what the build on offer. The focus here is to use our grenades to do the continuous damage, stack damage and build up our super outside of getting weapon kills, and I can say strongly that the results are fairly good. Outside of the subclass, you don't need to expand on the super usage anymore via weapon perks, as we only need two key mods to help us get our super quickly. If you do as followed, then the weapon and mod section can be done in whatever style you enjoy best, and that there will allow you the freedom to play how you like. For the weapon section now, we have the following, which is always down to you to decide on what's best. For primary, I went with Messenger Pulse Rifle with Rapid Hit and Frenzy as his main trait, and this is solely for endgame content and fighting against unstoppables. Not a lot of people will be able to get the funnel weapon anymore, as it's not in rotation, and the role is also hard to get on other pulses in game, but this isn't as much of an issue that you may think. As the build is end game, you can pick any primary weapon you want in this section, as you're not limited on one legendary weapon of use. If you haven't already, I would recommend you add in the bad juju pulse if you're a player who hasn't gotten the frontal wisdom mod just yet. Although I said Ashes to Assets mod will be enough, that's because I have the additional Elemental World mod being used that will passively regen my super and push my intellect stats to an extra plus 50 on top of what's currently there. So as most of you won't have this mod, the Bad Juju is a great replacement to have if you don't have any other exotic in play, and this is fantastic for endgame content as well. Alternatively, the Feral Tower Diddly bow can get fresh and is also great for anti-barrier enemies as well. For secondary, we have the Tarnished Metal Scout with Volt Shot and Demolitionist, which is a fun and crazy combo to get on the weapon alone. If you ever get the chance to, I would recommend you farm this weapon out, as the following combo is great for arc based builds that focus on Volt and Grenade usage. I have used this role since the day I got it, and it has been perfect for taking out groups of ads quickly and effectively, and the fact that it synergizes well with my arc subclass means that you can use your abilities freely with no sudden need to swap gear around. Farm this weapon out if you can for this specific role alone, and if not, then a version with Volt Shot or Demolitionist is equally as great to own. 
for heavy with the storm chaser linear fusion with clown cartridge and frenzy as well and the heavy slot can be swapped out for a arc heavy machine gun or rocket launch instead if you're not able to get the following weapon great weapon to have when up against champions as the extra shot it provides allows you to waste less ammo on single targets and more on the end game bosses you may face of course this will vary from bosses to bosses as not all will have easy to hit crit spots nonetheless it's a great weapon to use and pack with you while out and about in the world and for end game it's even more perfect there for stats, the main thing to worry about the most is your grenades in super regen speed, which will play a big part in how fast you can use a super. As we aren't using anything extra for getting our super up quickly, we just need to focus on making sure that these two key areas are kept afloat, and the best way for that is to make both the stats the same level as each other, or have the mods that can help speed up the recovery. Discipline being at 80 is quite enough for users if you use elemental wells, and the demolition is perfect for sustaining it for longer. As our secondary has Volt Shot attached, we can make use the Arc Chain effect and get our grenades back up much faster compared to getting individual kills. This is enough, and just having an Arc weapon with demo is more than enough to keep the build going for long as well. You can add in additional things like Absolution and Bomber to the mix, but I find it useless with how fast we can regenerate our abilities without it. Your intellect will follow in the same footsteps in terms of mods being used, but for stats itself, it will be placed at 50 instead because of the Fawn of Wisdom effect. Remember that the mod will be giving you an extra plus 50 in intellect on top of what you currently have for your stat, so in general you'll have 100 here instead of the standard 50. This goes a long way as this will also be passively increasing your super regen rate as you play, so you don't need to worry about adding on another rapid regen mod or perks here. What you will need to have though is the Ashes to Ashes mod, as this combined with our high discipline stat will make our grenades twice as effective than before. If you follow this exact step, you won't need to worry about using bad juju or fresh to help you out further. Left with wise, we have Harmonic Siphon for creating orbs of power via matching subclass and weapon type. Invigoration for reducing melee cooldown when collecting orbs of power. Near Scavenger mod for more ammo reserves. And bad amplitude where hitting a champion with arc abilities makes them jolted. As we have covered the main topics of the setup, here are the mods we have left over and how they will overall affect the build. Go ahead, pause the spot and make a note of it. For our head we have Recovery, Ashes to Assets, Harmonic Siphon and Battle of World mod. Arm we have Recovery and Fond of Wisdom mod. Chest we have Discipline, Film much of Plating, because of Damner and Elemental Orders mod. Leg we have Resilience, Linear Fusion Scavenger mod, Invigoration and Seeking Wells mod. Mark we have Resilience, Bad Amplitude and Thunderous Retort mods. We can now show off the power that Fallen Star offers to users when amplified and used against any target you face. For example, if you're playing GMs, you have noticed that Champions and Hive Light Bearers can be a pain to deal with at times. Using our base super against them will inflict a heavy amount of damage against them, but not enough to one-shot them. Using Fallen Star will increase our super damage by an extra 100%, which is enough to one-shot champions when stunned. However, if you want to one-shot them without stunning them at all, then you will need to have Thunderous Retort, which will easily give you an extra 30% on top of the base damage you already have. In other words, you can nuke up to 1, 2, 3, however many champs you want in one shot, and it's so easy to pull off back to back when using your grenade to build up super energy in the process. You can take this build anywhere with you and see just how powerful it is with clearing up areas in a single hit. Even its use against bosses are noticeable, although risky at times. If you ever do use it against bosses, then you'll most likely be able to pull it off and have an overshield available on your success. But even if that was the case, the overshield provided is very limited and can be chewed through before you manage to get behind cover. It's a very risky build to use in GMs or contest mode raids or anything like that, but it's not too hard to get away with it, you just have to plan it out first. Except from the super being very powerful, you also have the flexibility of weapons being used and grenades having a strong impact on every encounter you play. Weapons can be anything you like as it won't take away from the main build too much, but having a bolt shot or demolition perk on your weapon go a long way for you. Your grenades with Touch of Thunder pretty much denies enemies from leaving the area in one piece, and the strength of the grenade alone will help get your super back relatively quickly. 
No need for bad juju or anything else. Just grenades, your weapons of choice, and Ash's assets are enough to keep you going from start to finish. But the bad juju rule only applies to those who don't have the main key mods, as mentioned earlier. And that's pretty much the build in a nutshell, since it's just expanded on the one we're already familiar with. It's a great setup for those who like to use Thunder Clash a lot, and want to inflict the biggest damage possible without needing to use your heavy. If you ever want to know what it would be like to use Hara in this light, but for a super instead, with a very high damage rate, then this build is the best guide for that. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep updated with Destiny content and banter if you like that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.